Hey, this is Patchy from Infinities.com. I'm just going to show you a video on how to DNS spoof a web server that hosts multiple websites on it. The first thing you want to do when you're doing a DNS spoofing attack is get the IP address of the website you want to spoof. And you just do that with an NS lookup. Alright, once you have the IP address of the web server, all you need to do is go to Ethercap's DNS config and uh, add an entry into it. In Backcheck 3, it's located in user, local, share, Ethercap. Alright, I'm just going to add another entry into the DNS config. I'm just going to do asterisk A and then IP address of the web server that Infinity's this is hosted on. This is, uh, what this will do is whenever someone makes a request for the IP address of a website, Ethercap will return a response with this IP address. Now I'm just going to open up Ethercap, uh, start on a normal sniff. and enable DNS spoofing. And what you expect to happen when you open up uh, a browser and go to a website, you, should ex you would expect to be uh, redirected to infinitesis.com. However, that is not the case as you can see right here. It pops up with the site temporarily unavailable. And as you can see, the DNS spoof did work properly. What's going on here is the web server that hosts infinitesis.com also hosts, hosts many other websites and you can just do a, a who is lookup on the, on the web server and you can just see how many other websites are being hosted. Just put in the IP address, push go. Alright. And you can see there's like 21 other websites on the same web server as infinitesis.com. So, the IP address is not enough to determine which website you're trying to go to. But how does a web server determine which website you're trying to access when you go to a site? And to figure this out, we just open up Wireshark, and we can view the, the get statements as they go across the wire. I'm just going to filter out all the traffic besides HTTP and then I'm going to make a request for a website and you just click on right click on and follow the stream as you can see in the get request there's a host header that includes the which website you're going to this informs the web server which uh, virtual host you're trying to access And if we look at the git request of one we just put in the IP address, you can see in the host header, it doesn't have enough information for the website to determine where you're trying to go. Um, with the web server that Infinitesis is hosted on, it returns an error message. Um, some websites will just return a default website. Anyways, um, so we need to make some kind of script that will change this host header. And what I did is I used a combination of a Ethercap filter and a C program to do this process. And this is what the Ethercap filter looks like. First it checks if the packet is TCP, then it checks the destination port to see if it's 80, that's what most web servers are hosted on. And then it checks if the destination IP address is the IP address that, of the web server that Infinitesis is being hosted on. And then it searches that packet for the, the host header. If it has that host header, it checks to see if, it, if the host header is already set to infinitesis.com. 
if it is, there's no reason to change it, and uh, we don't do anything here. If not, we log the packet, drop it, so it doesn't it doesn't get sent to the the web server, and then we execute this C program I made um, to change that header, and then create a new packet, and then that new packet is injected. All right, here's the C program that I wrote. Basically what it does is it takes in three inputs. It takes in the packet file, the output file that you want to save it to, and then the host that you want to change the host header to. Basically it'll read through the packet, find the host header, change it, and then save it in the output file. So that EtherCap can inject that packet With these two scripts combined, it will change the host header to the correct form. And I'm just going to use GCC to compile the C program and EtherFilter to compile the EtherCap filter. And then they are, they're both were compiled correctly. Alright, I'm just going to open up EtherCap here. I'm going to start stiffing on my wireless network card. I'm going to scan for hosts. I guess the victim computer is not on the network right now. Hold on a second. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to add the victim to target one and then the default gateway to target two. That way I can do a one way poison because we only need to get. We only need to get packets that are sent from the victim to the, the remote host, to the web server. Just going to start sniffing. Um, going to start the, the DNS spoof. And EtherCap is still configured to take all DNS requests and return the IP address of the web server that Infinity is on. And then we want to load our filter. Alright. And now we can switch over to our victim computer and see if it worked. Alright, I must mention that you need a you need a halfway decent computer to do this because your computer has to be able to sniff the packets, analyze the packets, um, save that packet and then manipulate it and then re-inject it all in a matter of a uh, milliseconds. So you need a, you need a pretty a pretty decent computer to be able to do this. And we'll just go to Google. And there you go, it worked. Um, it sent us to infinitus.com and that's exactly what we wanted to do. And this should work for all websites. We'll just try uh, Millworm here. All right, there you go. That is how you do DNS spoofing with a web server that hosts multiple hosts on it.